Hello everyone, welcome to Clarity 15.8 support training. In this section, we're going to be focusing on the timesheet improvements. There's a few things we want to talk about in this section. Uh, within the timesheet grid, we have some additional filter options. Uh, it now includes, the timesheet grid itself now includes uh, resource, OBS, and employment type attributes. So by virtue of the, the timesheets grid being a common component, those attributes are available uh, in the grid, flyout, column panel, and filters. The second item is the timesheet grid now includes the virtual timesheets. Um, we'll talk more about that as we move on. And the last but not least here, uh, there's a, a new job it's called the D Delete Duplicate Timesheet Jobs. There's a new job that helps identify the duplicate timesheet condition that's associated with a single peer time period uh, resource and a resource ID and then provides the ability to remove them from the system. So why is this important? Well, the um, timesheet grid and incorporating these additional filters, again, based on user requests, uh, we really want to support their ability to drive adoption across the organization. So managers are looking to have these tools to, to quickly locate and manage timesheets across multiple periods. The timesheet grid and, and its inclusion of virtual timesheets in this release now, the um, managers now have the ability to filter for open timesheets across multiple active periods and truly prepare that missing time report directly from the configurable timesheets grid. Um, the last item here, the duplicate timesheet jobs. In limited customer cases, the system was erroneously creating duplicate timesheets for a given period, so customers were struggling with this situation and they've requested the capability to help identify that condition and then remove them from the system to really improve their internal timesheet audit process processes. So what's what's changed? So fairly straightforward from the timesheet grid, the employment type is now available for use in the as a in the grid and or a filter. Obviously it can be configured in the flyout as well. Um, the resource OBS is now available uh, as a component of the grid. Just want to point out, at, at this time, it's not available uh, in the column panel to be included in the grid. It was just a, a matter of uh, priorities, and the first things first was added as a filter to allow the managers to kind of look at all timesheets associated with a certain portion of the organization. Um, virtual timesheets, they're now in the grid. So just for those of you that are perhaps new to the organization or new to the solution, virtual timesheets defined. So I'll just stick with a, a simple example where 100 users are configured for open time entry. And in this case, none of those users have navigated to their timesheet to enter time. In other words, they haven't touched the system. They haven't gone in and actually just opened a timesheet for a particular period. So in the prior release, Staying with this user, the hundred users, the manager wouldn't wouldn't doesn't wouldn't have had visibility to know how many of those users have not entered time. In other words, the fifteen seven one grid didn't include those additional hundred rows. So now with fifteen eight, uh, it's been updated to include those those quote unquote virtual rows, uh, providing that visibility into how many users have not entered time. And then the manager can use the export to CSV to create that missing time report directly from the timesheet. So sticking with that uh, example of 100 users, the 15.8 timesheet grid now includes the, the 100 rows for each user that has not entered time. From a duplicate timesheet job perspective, um, there is the ability to identify it from the, the grid itself, the timesheet grid. So like I mentioned, in limited uh, cases, the system is erroneously um, creating these duplicate entries. So here I can see um, it's visible directly from the grid. I've got for the same user, for the same period, I've got two timesheets there. That's strange, right? Um, I can see one that's got 22 hours for it and the other has zero. So that's a clear indication of, of that, this condition. 
and we need to remedy that. So there's a new job that's been created uh, in the available jobs listing. Delete duplicate timesheet jobs by going into it and doing, you know, using some sort of uh, filter uh, with these various parameters. You can go in and you can see the um, the conditions that exist. So in this example here, I've got a few users. I can see the periods, um, and I can see the status. So what we're really looking for here is if there's more than one timesheet for a particular user that has status of, and timesheet status is right here, uh, it, if it has more than one status for a given user for a period, 0 through 3 is what we're looking for, then we basically got a duplicate timesheet, a duplicate uh, situation. So I'll show you how to, how to remedy this situation in just a few seconds here. So we'll jump into the demo. So <clears throat> this is, uh, we'll show the resource OBS and employment type in the grid. We'll look at the virtual timesheet grid and the output itself. And then we'll also look at identifying that duplicate timesheet condition and then um, remediating that using the uh, new job that's available. So let me pop out and we'll go back to the product. I'm going to go into timesheets. I'm just going to go to the grid. <coughs> so um, as you know, the, the grid provides that resource manager the ability to see um, uh, see time, time or see work or timesheets across multiple periods. Uh, the flyout uh, allows you to get to directly, well, I'll go to the one that's open, directly to the timesheet if you wanted to. I'm not going to go there for purpose of today. It's not necessarily a new capability. But what I want to get at is the new filters. So I'm going to go into our resource manager view, kind of expose the filter here. You can see I've focused in on Ray Fowler as the resource manager, so you can see that. Um, notice that I've included employment type in the in the um, grid itself as part of this save view. There's employment type right there. Um, so it gives me much more flexibility to kind of search for uh, timesheets and or the, the, the classification of employment type. Um, note that there are uh, 594 rows here. Um, this does include the this particular view that I'm on includes this virtual uh, timesheets, um, and now I can simply go to export. Oh, so the other thing I want to point out is that you know I do my export to CSV. If it's greater than 500 rows, um, you will receive the user will receive a notification that the job is run behind the scenes. <clears throat> and you pick it up from there, I'll show that in a second. If it's less than 500 rows, it's going to drop it um, right here in the in the tray. I'm on a Mac, so it's going to put it down at the bottom. So I run the missing time report uh, in the interest of time, and I've got my CXV, uh, CSV export ran, and I'm using this view, right? It's called the Resource Manager view. I've got it right here. Um, it will drop it into the tray right here. Down in my lower left here, I'm going to open that up. <coughs> Whoops, I'm just going to close that out. Oh, shoot, what did I do? Yeah, here it is. Um, I'm on a Mac, so it defaults to the numbers application, but what you get here is this missing time report. So now the we can claim victory here in this release with generating that report. So it's really exciting to be able to get that into the system for our users today. Um, the next thing I want to talk about was the duplicate timesheet. So I'm going to go to a view here, duplicate timesheet view. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a filter set already for this particular view for a single time period, or I'm looking for something that starts at least on March 2nd. And I've filtered on Rita. So these are all Rita's um, uh, time cards, time sheets, if you will. So notice right here for this user, same period, I've got a status here of uh, submitted, which is um, you know basically from behind the scenes. That's a one. So I've got two. I've got two two of these that are sitting here. Obviously, this is 22 hours and zero. So something's up. So I'm going to step over to um, 
Classic, and we're going to run this job to clean this up. So I'm going to open this up. <clears throat> Come over to, oops, excuse me, reports and jobs. Go to jobs, delete. I'll just use delete as the filter criterion. Come back, duplicate energy. There's my new job, and it's going to bring us to the the standard you know format. So this new job uh, in its properties window includes it basically inherits all of the job capabilities that all of the other jobs have. One thing I want to do here is I'm going to click into the parameter section here. I'm going to click the binoculars, and it's going to bring up my you know filter criteria. And any number of attributes are all here. I can search an ID, name, unique name, start date, status, or time entry count. And the time entry count is really the um, number of tasks associated with a given um, timesheet. So I've done a show all. And so here's the information. We saw Rita back in the modern user experience, but there's also two other users here that um, basically are indicating a duplicate timesheet condition. Notice the timesheet status. As I mentioned, if there's more than one timesheet that has a status uh, between 0 and 3, then we've got the condition. So Rita, right off the bat, for the same period start date, she's got duplicate here uh, of those that are submitted. Looks like Aaron has um, one that's been submitted, and two of them have been returned. So these are some duplicate conditions. Uh, for the same period, more than one of these in a 0 through 3. And then Adriana has each 1, 0, and 3. So all three of these are bad. Typically, what you want to do is look at you know the 2 here indicates the task associated with a given timesheet. So typically, what you would do is uh, grab all those associated with zero, check, 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 and run the job. So for purposes of our demo today, we had focused on Rita on the modern uh, time, modern UX timesheets grid. So I'm going to grab this particular entry. It's got a zero. I'm going to add it. I'm going to um, submit the job right now, just running it um, on demand. And that's that. I'm going to come back to the solution. And notice, I, I haven't refreshed yet, but just for your memory, we had the two entries here for Rita. I'm going to refresh, and hopefully in the world of magic, um, this behaves correctly. And there we are. We're back to one for Rita for that particular time frame. So a lot of frustration has been uh, um, conveyed through support from key customers that have had uh, experienced this condition. So I believe that this um, job will help customers do this independently and or if they need it with the help of support. Okay, so that kind of rounds out the demo.